Hi, I'm Joe Carswell with Teach Construction, and through our partnership with WorkNow, we had the opportunity to go take a tour with Adam Mercer of the C70 project. If you're not familiar with the Central 70 project, it's happening in Denver. It's a highway improvement project that's taking an existing elevated section of that highway, and it is putting it below grade or in a trench, and then creating a bunch of bridges or overpasses to connect the roads. It's a really huge project, really interesting project. And if you want to learn more about it, you can find out more at the CDOT website. As a matter of fact, I'll just put a link for you down below. The goal for our visit was not only to learn more about the project itself, but also the jobs and skills it takes to get something like this done. We were on site for over an hour. We got a lot of great footage. And I want to show you a short clip here where Adam is describing to us specifically what's happening on one of those many overpasses in the project. While you're watching the video, pay really close attention and take note of all the different jobs, skills, and tools needed to do this work. And I'll check back with you when it's over. All right, so we got the old portion here. We're making the new portion. We're going to shift all that traffic down to here, and then we're going to do this same thing all over again over there. Correct. So, wow. so right now, all the bridges that go over top of I-70 are built or are being built. Right. Our last deck pour is currently going down on its uh, York Street, right. which is a few blocks away. So here they're doing the overpass. They've yep. got all the, the precast parts in place on your columns. What's happening today, this moment up so there? So currently, so right now, like I said, you can see that you can see the concrete girders. Yep. Those go on top of the abutment and the piers. So we have our columns and the pier. Yep. So basically we are building the bridge that goes over I-70. The blue arm that sticks up is the concrete pump truck. Right. So that is taking concrete from uh, below grade, pumping it up to the bridge deck. Instead of hand placing it, you place it with the pump truck itself. Right. And there we got our truck right there. That's the one that's... Correct. So we actually have two pump concrete pump trucks. So we have one that's a backup in case, uh, in case the other one goes out. We have a concrete truck on site that we doesn't slow down and we can continue to pump the concrete into place. Interesting. Once you start a deck pour, you never want to stop right, it. Right, absolutely. So you don't want to have any uh, hiccups uh, and you keep going. The yellow piece of equipment here you see is called a bid well. And that's how it, it, it rides on um, metal rails and that helps set grade top elevation of the concrete as it finishes it. Like a screed. It, it's basically a screed and it has, um, has a, a, on the back of the screed, it has uh, some burlap that keeps finishing as they go. No. Very little hand finishing takes place behind the bid well. If it's set up correctly, you have to do hardly any, uh, no hand finishing at Interesting. all. Interesting. So the, the concrete comes in a, in a ready mix plant. They, they right. make it off site. They bring the concrete trucks here. The concrete trucks dump into the pump truck. Right. If you see in the distance there, you can see the, the, the Metro mix truck that's spinning. Yes. Uh, that's what they are doing is he's washing out, but typically they back, back up to the pump truck, uh, dump their concrete, dump their load into the pump truck, and then the pump truck comes over. Uh, the guys here and the, uh, the, the laborers that are working on the bridge are actually placing the concrete from the pump truck itself. Got it. So uh, the pump truck operator actually is a remote control. He can move the arm and the location of his nozzle where he wants to go based off remote control. He's standing up there watching the crew looking for direction. The crew is placing the concrete, so you have people there who are uh, uh, shoveling the concrete, making sure yeah. they don't have too much in different areas. You have uh, guys working uh, the vibrators so they can consolidate the concrete correctly. Right. And then you have some finishers on the outside edges where the bid well cannot reach near right. the sidewalks. You have finishers there finishing the concrete, making sure that it's at the proper grade. You see all those guys up there, that's a lot of handwork, but it's always, whenever you're pouring, it's all hands on deck, right? It is. I mean, that's why you have so many people up there right. to make it sure because, you know, the worst case scenario is you're not ready when the concrete wants to set up. Right. So it has to be in the place it needs to be before it starts to get hard. Right. And that's what the, all the folks there are. So Adam, we've talked about a lot of different things that are happening here. There's a lot of jobs and a lot of skill levels going on here. Um, as far as workers go and what they need to do this job can you kind of walk us through from what's the basic level of skill and then maybe we can talk about some higher level of skills you might bring to this the basic level is the willingness to work hard the willingness to work long days right. and the willingness to learn right. because you hope in your career that you learn everything from the ground level up right. and you can you can put your hard work into your whatever job you have 
and, and the crews and the foreman will see that you are devoting your time into learning the operation, learning what's going on. And then slowly you take your steps up and you keep moving up higher and higher in your career. Yeah, I, I think I think Kiewit and their, their subcontractors, if, if, if you're willing to work and put in the time and do whatever you're asked, they will find a job for you. If, if I was gonna learn something and bring a skill here, what are some of those basic fundamental skills that will help me progress or help me do this job? You know, some basic, uh, some basic, basic math, you know, making sure you can do some math. Uh, there are plan reading classes to learn how to read a set of plans. Read a set of plans. Yep. What, like you say math. Know how to work a tape measure. Know how to work a tape measure. You can work measure. a tape measure. You can do Got a it. lot of the, the work that we do here. Got it. Simple, basic, Absolutely. standard tape measure. Yep. So other measuring, probably levels, right? Correct. Yeah, Lasers. Yep, yep. I mean, typical tools that you see around your house. Right. You know, some small tools, uh, wrenches, uh, you know, wire cutters. Uh, sure. the levels, if you can use those tools, you can right. come out here and do a lot of the work that right. we have here. Nice. Power tools? What kind of power tools? Absolutely. You see a lot of small power tools here, uh, especially the carpenters, right? They have right. skill saws that they are uh, cutting their forms. Right. Uh, hammers, uh, jackhammers, right. uh, uh, sand sanders, different things that they need grinders, to have. Grinders. Yep, grinders for concrete grinding and finishing. Right. Uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a lot of different things. All of your probably uh, concrete hand tools, trowels, Absolutely, rakes, yeah. Yeah, If you have any skill set doing concrete finishing, right. uh, you can definitely find work out here on this scale. And, and you know, a lot of our concrete finishing isn't as precise as landscaping at a home, right? But right. our sidewalks and our curb and gutter definitely are, and it takes a good finisher to make it all look good. Right. But if I don't have any skills, you still have a place for me. Absolutely, yes. And, uh, you know, you're going to learn quick. You're going to come here. You're going to learn fast. They're going to put you to work, and you're going to be doing things you might not know how to do. Ask questions. They have training on different school, uh, different tools. They won't hand you a tool if you don't know how to properly use it. So Kiwit does a good job of training their employees and keeping nice. them safe. So Adam, I appreciate you taking your time. I know you got a lot going on here. Absolutely, yes. So I want to stop right there. Let's go through this list that Adam mentioned of all of these jobs. He started with your concrete truck driver. There's a lot of material being delivered on site. Someone has to operate those trucks and it's happening constantly. You also have your concrete pump truck. This truck is pumping that concrete from the ground level up to where they need it. Someone has to operate that truck. You also have your bid well machine. This is a really cool finishing machine. Someone has to operate that heavy equipment as well. You also have a whole crew of concrete laborers that are working in and around these trucks and they are moving that concrete around for it then to be finished. Some of those concrete laborers are operating tools called vibrators. This is a really important part of the process. And then you have your concrete finishers. These are higher skilled workers that are smoothing out all of that concrete to finish it out. There's a whole list of jobs that Adam and I didn't even get into. It's related to the rebar or steel that needs to be put in place before the concrete can be poured. It's a really important part of that process. So as you can see, just on this one small part of this site, one overpass, all of the jobs and the opportunities for jobs that are happening there. And I guarantee you that uh, a position for any one of those jobs is available at all times. So what are employers looking for from their employees on this site? You heard Adam mention working hard, working long days, and the willingness to learn. In my experience, that's pretty standard for construction. He also mentioned the ability to do math. He kind of clarified that as the ability to use a tape measure. He also mentioned plan reading as a good skill to have. He mentioned using a level, which is another measuring tool. And he mentioned some basic hand tools. I think he uh, commented on a pair of wire cutters. There's a lot of power saws used by carpenters to create forms that the concrete is poured in. There's also a whole list of demo tools used in a project like this. And there's a lot of concrete finishing tools as well. If you don't have skills in these tools, don't worry about it. There's a lot of opportunity to get training before you get employed, but the good news is there's a lot of on-the-job training available to further your career. The best way to grow your career is to expand your knowledge and learn new skills. So that's it for now. Next time I go on site, I hope to see you in the field.